The breathing pattern is as unique as the fingerprint. Every human being is different, unique, like a snowflake. One of the most famous features that distinguishes us from others is the imprint the finger. But it turns out that each of us also has a unique pattern of breath, thanks to who can be identified. This pattern can also be an indicator physical and mental health, new research suggests. The way we breathe in and then let air out from the lungs, it is unique to every human being. Like the line layout fingerprint on the fingertips. Research that appeared in the journal Current Biology, researchers have shown that specific individuals can be identified solely on the basis of breath patterns with relatively high accuracy reaching nearly 97%. This technique also offers insight into physical health and it's a psychic. Every inhalation and exhalation is coordinated to deliver oxygen it takes the brain to manage the body. It's a link between the brain and breathing led scientists to ask, since every brain is unique, will each person's breathing pattern be like that? To test this the researchers invited 97 healthy people. They also developed a light device to wear, mounted on the neck, which tracks the airflow through the nose continuously for 24 hours using tubes placed under nostrils. Researchers equipped the participants with the device and asked them to wear it during performing ordinary, everyday activities and during sleep. For the characteristics of breath patterns, the assembly has 24 parameters from airflow data including inhalation duration and exhaust and asymmetry of airflow between nostrils. The scholars have separated also the periods in which the participants slept and trained on this data algorithm the machine learning. Over time, the number of parameters for the respiratory profile a person has increased significantly. A team of scientists led by Noam Sobel from Weizmann the Institute of Science in Israel has determined that it is used by the device breathing patterns can be identified specific participants from the study with an accuracy of 96.8%. High accuracy remained unchanged in many retests carried out within two years, matching the precision some voice recognition technologies. You would think that breathing was measured and executed from every angle. And yet we found a whole new way looking at breathing, said Sobel. In a way, we read the mind through the nose. This can be a very effective diagnostic tool, he added. Researchers also found that breathing patterns appear to be correlate with body mass index BMI sleep and wakefulness cycle and signs depression and anxiety and even behavioral traits. For example participants who admitted in the questionnaires completed before the surveys to anxiety disorders, had shorter breaths and greater variability of breaks between breathing and sleep. Scientists suggest long-term flow monitoring air through the nose can serve as a window on physical and emotional feeling well. Intuitively, we assume how depressed someone is or restless, it changes the way you breathe. But it may be the opposite. Perhaps it is the way you breathe makes you anxious or depressed. If it is truth, we may be able to change the way of breathing to change these conditions, admitted Sobel. Long-term monitoring of breath with developed the devices have some limitations by the researchers. Tubes running under the nose can be associated with some disease, which may discourage study participants from studying them to wear constantly. The device also does not take into account the breathing through the mouth and it can slide down during sleep. That's why researchers want to develop a better, more discreet and more convenient version of your camera for everyday the use. The new brain implant almost immediately translates thoughts into speech and allows you to control the intonation. Scientists have developed an experimental brain-computer interface, aware of hope to restore the possibility of communicating to people who they have lost this ability due to neurological disorders. 
The device allows in Tauton control and generates voice at the speed of normal conversation. It allows even humming simple melodies. Developed by researchers from the University of California Davis, UC Davis, brain implant allowed a person suffering from amyotrophic sclerosis side, ALS, for normal conversation with family. The device has made it possible communicate with voice generated by a computer with a speed indistinguishable from natural speech. Moreover, it even allowed change of intonation and humming of simple melodies. The description of the implant appeared in the journal Nature. New implant almost immediately postpones activity neural to words much faster than possible using previous versions of this technology. Even earlier versions allowed only for translating brain activity into text. But a new interface the brain computer even allows you to emphasize words in a sentence and hum simple songs. Translating neural activity into text, as our previous brain computer interface works, is similar to writing the text messages. This is a major improvement compared to the standard assistive technologies but still lead to delayed communication. The new voice prosthesis does it in real time and more like normal Sergi Stavisky and UC Davis said. Voice synthesis users will be able to turn on more it's a conversation. They can, for example, interrupt, they can interrupt. New brain computer interface compounds with four microelectrode systems surgically implanted into the area of the brain responsible for the production of speech. In total, it is 256 electrodes, each with a length 1.5 millimeters. These systems record the activity of neurons in the brain, and their ratio to speed is handled by machine learning algorithms. The main barrier in real-time voice synthesis was lack of accurate knowledge, when in how a person with speech loss tries to speak Maitri Weiragar, the first author of the study, told us. Our algorithms they constantly map neural activity. This makes it possible to synthesize speech nuances and it gives the participant control over the rhythm of the voice, she added. The experimental kit was awarded to 47-year-old Casey Harrell, who lost his voice due to atrophic lateral sclerosis five years ago. The disease neurodegenerative has weakened the connections between the motor cortex of the brain and the muscles controlling language, lips, and larynx, preventing it from creating understandable words. New implant explained man's neural signals to speech played through a loudspeaker in just one forty second. Thanks to the the man's interface was able to modulate the intonation generated by the computer voice computer Ogoas, you could hear the question. The participant also attempted to change the height of the sound, humming straight, short melodies. Using the device, the participant could spell and say what he wanted, even using some words that weren't part of the data the training algorithms. The interface recognized whether the participant tried say your opinion as question or as a statement. The system could also determine when he accented different words in the same sentence and adjust accordingly tone of your synthetic voice. Volunteers who were asked to rate how well they understand Harold, they said they understood about 60% of what he said, using the interface, compared with 4% of the words that he spoke without him. This is still far from 98% of the accuracy achieved by system decoding neural activity on text that Harold uses on every day, but the researchers say that this should be improved over time. The process of instant translation of brain activity into speech synthesized is supported by advanced artificial algorithms the intelligence. These used in the new system have been trained using data collected when the participant tried to say different sentences shown to him on the computer screen. This gave the researchers information about what he tried, say. Neural activity has recorded patterns of hundreds of neurons during these trials. 
scientists matched these patterns to the sounds of speech that the participant tried to create at the moment. This helped the algorithm to teach reconstruct the voice and sentences that the man wanted speak based on neuronal signals. The voice is personalized also by algorithms that learned it on recorded recordings before the onset of the disease. The results of these studies give hope to people who want to speak, but they can't. We showed how a paralyzed man got the opportunity speak with a synthesized version of your voice. This kind of technology can be transformative for people living with paralysis, he said. David Brandman of UC Davis Scientists note that although the results are promising, voice neuroprosthesis remains early in development. The basic the restriction of this study is that it was carried out with participation one participant from ALS. Repeat these results with more participants, including those who have lost speech for other reasons, such as the stroke, it'll be crucial. Strange signals detected over Antarctica. Set of space radiation detectors placed on balloons high above Antarctica detected a series of strange signals that researchers they can't explain. Unusual radio pulses were detected by experiment Anita. Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna It's a set of radio antennas suspended on a helium-filled balloon that circulated over about a month Antarctica at an altitude of about 40 km between 2006 and 2016. Scientists four times they released a balloon to study high-energy neutrinos. Neutrinos are ultralight elementary particles. It is not they have an electric charge and a negligible mass allows them to travel to huge distances of billions of light years. They are created during a series processes such as radioactive decay, nuclear fusion at star centers, or as a result of supernova explosions. Although next to photons they are the most prevalent the particles in the universe are still not known much about them. Neutron and not subject to the influence of magnetic fields and very weakly interact with its a matter. Not bad enough, they are often referred to as particle spirits. They can penetrate most objects without leaving a trace. Matter seems transparent to them. Scientists estimate that by one square centimeter of the surface of our planet facing the sun every second there are 65 billion neutrinos. But neutrinos are very difficult to detect. At any time, a billion pass through the fingernail of the thumb neutrinos, but neutrinos don't really interact. If they are we will detect, it means that they have traveled all this way without interacting with its nothing else. We could detect neutrino from the observable edge the universe, said Stephanie Whistle, CEO author of the paper which it was published in the journal Physical Review Letters. Once the source is detected and traced, these particles can reveal a lot of information about space events. Because neutrinos can move without interference and almost at the speed of light, can carry information on space events that took place light years from here. Antenna set in a NETA experiment mounted on a balloon is directed downwards to look for neutrino signals interacting with ice so-called large atmospheric bursts, or cascades of particles and photons that form in the Earth's atmosphere and are initiated with a single particle of radiation cosmic high energy. The Anita experiment was placed in Antarctica, because there there is little chance of interference from other signals. Detectors capture the signals of the particle cascade formed in the atmosphere and signals reflected from ice. We have radio antennas on a balloon that flies 40 kilometers over the ice of Antarctica. We direct our antennas down to the ice and look for neutrinos, which interact with ice, producing radio emissions, which we can then detecting on our detectors, Whistle said. In the aforementioned publication, scientists reported the detection by the ANITA experiment, a series of signals that have not been reflected by ice, 
and they seem to come from the horizon a direction that researchers can't explain and which may suggest new types of particles or interactions, earlier unknown to science. The signals we have detected were really below sharp angles, about 30 degrees below the surface of the ice, Whistle said. This anomalous signal, as the researchers calculated, had to pass for thousands of kilometers of rocks and interact with them before reaching the detector. Such a trajectory through rocks should rather make a signal undetectable, but yet he reached the detectors. We still have no explanation for what these anomalies are, but we know that they probably don't represent neutrino, Whistle said. Scientists can distinguish two signals, a burst signal reflected from ice and a crack formed in the atmosphere. By analyzing them, some can be determined attributes of the particle that produced the signal. These signals can then be tracked back to their source, but for anomalous signals not this can be done, because the angle of their reflection is much sharper than they predict existing models. Analyzing the data collected during four Anita flights and compared to mathematical models and extensive simulations were able to filter out background noise and eliminate the possibility of other known the sources of signals. They also compared recorded events with other detectors neutrino, like the Ice Cube experiment and the Pierre Auger Observatory, to see if similar signals were recorded by them, but nothing was detected there it's the same. This only suggested to scientists that the idea that the signal detected was not they caused the neutrino, it is more likely. Signals don't fit standard image of particle physics. Researchers speculate that this may be there is no convincing evidence for this.